welcome to seras 3 technologies skill development training and webinars it gives great pleasure to me on behalf of seras 3 to present this session i'm going to present a session on basics of composites first of all what are composites why do we need composites why composite materials evolution of composite materials composites over you materials reinforcement fibers and matrix practical applications of composites properties of composites ud lamina properties stress strain relationship stiffness transformations ud lamina manufacturing methods laminate construction methods and composite product development cycle simplified solution process naming of the solution process composite future trends in an another one hour session i am going to cover all these topics before going to this discussion first of all let us see what is the overview of industry so industry for last centuries together they are working on the there are many number of products developed on the metallic materials but now what is the use of going for these composites if you see the composites in turn as its presence since livelihood starts started from the ancient history because human body itself is a composite material but however as the technology progresses we started using the composites in a more scientific way as this gives more benefits compared to metallic materials that we are going to discuss now what are composites a structural composite is a material system consisting of two or more phases on the microscope scale whose mechanical performance and properties are designed to be superior to those of the constituent materials if you see in this figure it looks like it is a, a section of the a composite section where it consists of a fibers where that is mainly that which are all embedded in the matrix so this is called fiber this circle one and rest it is called as matrix so this composite is nothing but is a mixture of fibers fibers embedded in the matrix if you can see the engineering terms uh, tensile stress versus strain if you apply only the fiber it is a very highly st tensile strength material to get a particular strain it has to undergo a lot of stress but at the same time if you see the resin to get a particular amount of deformation strain the amount of load required is very less by combining these two it comes a intermediate behavior that is called fiber reinforcement composites is a best example is this wood inside is a one different material outside layer is a material if you see the fruit where exactly outside peel is a different material inside fiber is a inside fruit uh, lips is a different material so this is the best example of composites composites the fi fiber plus matrix is forming the composites the advantage of the composites is high strength high stiffness low density good shear properties if you see a film manner how a composite a single ply is put together and it is like a like a fabric as well as a unidirectional then why do we need composites because of as already discussed is of a high specific strength to stiffness and is withstanding high temperatures highly corrosion resistant outstanding durability and because of uses of the uh, composites we can reduce the number of part counts that's why assembly of the parts is easier and faster 
and electrically mainly electrically insulating in case of a metallic so there is a galvanic erosion there are many things will happen but in case of a composite it is a highly electrical insulated tailor made what are the advantages of composites lightweight high strength to weight ratio high stiffness to weight ratio highly corrosion resistant exceptional formability high creep resistance acoustical insulation electrical insulation thermal insulation and it's having high fatigue life but then what are the disadvantages there are some disadvantages because it is a very weak in impact and its cost of manufacturing is very high and it behaves like uh, it doesn't give any plastic behavior and all in regions of high concentration and to analyze this there are complex al analysis and there are so many empirical uh, methods and uh, testing of uh, preparation of material desert is very much uh, tedious and repairability is composite uh, is a little bit cumbersome and finally to see how this composite materials has evolved starting from 19 right starting from 1500 bc to present there are so much improvement has happened in the composites in the beginning egyptians and mesopotamian used strong clay to make the bricks that is the uh, area where it started also the composites so that's why it is not a new but it like but it we are using now in a more scientific way and more uh, exceptionally increased manner in 1946 polyester has been invented and uh, in 1948 acrylic uh, fiber 1954 polypropylene and boron filaments at the same and uh, at the same time uh, kevlar and uh, xylon and carbon fibers and many other uh, inventions have happened so but here there is one um, gentleman called um, goldsworthy brand goldsworthy he is uh, named as a father of composites he developed new manufacturing processes and products a n number of uh, impressive products product products he is credited with the numerous achievements and advancement in the in the composites and is the first to uh, to produce a fiberglass surfboard that has become a revolution in the sports industry and especially if he is in the uh, different industries like ship industry like civil industry and automobile and uh, aircraft industry so there is a lot of tremendous improvement in the uses of this uh, uh aircraft to industry that composites starting from 1960 to uh, 2000 uh, different players like airbus uh, boeing and companies they started using the uh, composites uh, almost nearly 50% of uh, in a in a plane structure and where are these composites are getting used like uh, aircrafts automobiles and uh, space one of the um, dream liner there is like a 787 where the boeing um, uh, aircraft uh, where they have used uh, uh, almost like 50% of uh, entire product uh, is with composites this data has been taken from the uh, website if you see this all all this uh, gray color is uh, with composites like a fuse laws like a wing and its tail is with composites and interestingly uh this airbus one of the uh, aircraft manufacturer and designer uh uses composites in a extensively uh in their uh, latest products uh, extra wide body a350 so this is almost like 50% of the material used with uh, composites so these are all uh, a different uh, nomenclature where exactly they started using this uh, carbon fiber but earlier carbon fiber uh, usage is uh, limited because its production cost is more but in future trends the production cost is going to reduce and they started using the increased manner that is becoming the future trend so this data has been taken from the flight international um, uh, uh, 
and so far we have discussed uh, what is a general overview but then what is that it's it ingredients of these uh, composites so one is fiber and the second is the matrix so the fibers uh, how what are kind of uh, what is the type of fibers and what is its uh, type of reinforcement what is its advantage just we are going to cover now so these fibers are like carbon it is a very uh, standard one and uh, aramid and kevlar e glass and s glass that is like uh, electrical glass and, and in what way these reinforcements are put like uh, unidirectionally and directionally and cross ply so that it is going to cover in this direction here cross fly angle fly oven this i am going to show you how exactly in the next uh, picture how it is going to be weave a plane twill satin so this is like uh, continuous fiber and this is discontinuous how exactly it is there if you see the carbon fiber how it looks like at a microscopic level this is like one uh, like a one thin carbon fiber its cross section looks like uh, this how exactly it behaves and what exactly its cross section so this is as a from the starting from 1984 to uh, now present trend how the carbon fiber usage is uh, increased so it looks like this uh, this is a carbon fibers if you bunch of the carbon fiber, it looks like a human hair but uh, its strength is almost like a more than a steel um, uh, material so uh, that's the such a strength of uh, this uh, carbon fibers uh, that's why it is extensively used in the industry how then how in a typical manner as a overview of carbon fiber so individual filaments it is taken then grouped together then it forms a bobbin and from there like a reel so from there it is uh, uh, like a, a put it into a, like a parallel to parallel uh, uh, rows in the like uh, in the preparation of uh, lamina that is called uh, once that um, rows are prepared then it is uh, impregnated with uh, resin then it will become prepegged then it will it is dried and finally that will become like a input for the laminate uh, development so then what is the basic features of composites uh, that is this is like in this like fibers are kept this is like a uh, matrix is embedded matrix that di transverse direction so length lengthy direction is very strong and uh, weak in the transverse direction so this is like a fiber how exactly it is covered with uh, different uh, material and finally the interface layer between the fiber and matrix so then how this uh, reinforcement are put into um, in the actual practice what is the classification composites uh, classification is done based on the fiber reinforcement like uh, structural reinforcement and fiber reinforcement so in case of a structural these are laminates this is called laminate monolithic laminate a sandwich panel where it is um, like a face sheets like a monolithic laminate uh, are covered with face sheets and uh, this this monolithic laminates here is called face sheets and is covered with it is separated by core with thin um, like a material thin soft material separated by a distance that will create some kind of sh shear properties crushing things will be more and if you see the fibers are uh, the embedded in the matrix uh, these are all the fibers embedded in the matrix finally it will give uh, like a single ply so this is in a microscopic way how these fibers are gelled with uh, matrix a different kind of uh, uh, matrix is in like a uh, fibers and uh, the way it has embedded in the matrix uh, we can call as a general like a chopped fiber like flakes and how exactly it is woven like a like a uh, fabric or it is unidirectional so this data has been taken from the some of the standard books and uh, internet so as i discussed the how the patterns are uh, this uh, fibers are uh, um, weaved that is like one over the other like alternately putting together it's called plane and this is like uh, two uh, two different uh, ways of a pattern like a mat like unidirectional and the satin like it will like a uh, two are put together separately two two layers so there is like alternate layers like a satin so this finally this is to give like a 
better balance and uh, strength uh, to the that way we are putting that uh, lamina to get a directional properties so now fiber the way how the classification has been done discussed now we can see that how matrix material uh, is classified how the matrix based on matrix material how the classification is uh, uh, done that we are going to discuss so the matrix uh, there are two types of uh, matrix it is almo almost like a plastic that is thermo setting and the thermoplastic thermo setting is there uh, is like a polyester and epoxy epoxy is uh, uh, very much uh, popularly used and in case of a thermoplastic polypropylene and polyamide and polyethylamide there are many and classification of the composite based on the uh, like matrices so that is like uh, like metal matrix where metal itself is a matrix embedded in other uh, like uh, group and poly matrix and ceramic matrix so there how this classify thermoplastic and thermoplastic so the type of the matrix material like uh, thermoplastic is uh, nylon thermoset is epoxy so this is a, a basic classification of composites on the matrix if you see then overall classification based on the reinforcement and the resin this slide explains that so this is on the whichever it is there in the left hand side it is like a reinforcement classification this is on the resin classification so finally another term in the, that is discussed in the uh, composite uh, is a, that is like a core which is useful in the sandwich construction one is the foam where it is a light in weight but it is a thick uh, in uh, size so that it will give some core crushing properties honeycomb it can be used as a aluminium or craft paper and different material like a wood balsa wood so finally what are all these uh, practical applications of these composites like uh, indian aircraft lca light combat aircraft and ship industry and sports like ship building and bridges nowadays the bridges are manufactured or I maybe mean, designed and constructed with um, composites this itself is a composite bridge is like a arc and this is like a like uh, support uh, rods other practical applications are automobile industry aircraft industry and this monolithic application is in the aircraft industry this is like um, like monolithic like the sheet stringer construction and this is like um, a skin like um, like a stringer or a frame uh, combined together it is like a composite uh, structure and other applications are civil engineering transport industry aerospace and mechanical and medicine on health care so so far we have discussed the uh, like uh, or is the in a nutshell of this um, composites uh, general now if comes to uh, generally what is this difference between the metallic and uh, as uh, metallic and uh, this uh, composite how it is going to uh, help us in the way we the design this structure what are all the things what precautions assumptions we need to take all these things we are going to discuss now so if you see that uh, in this picture where exactly a round ball uh, like before application of uh, like this like a uh, bed of, of uh, uh, like a normal metallic material at the same time similar is with uh, composite uh, material so if you apply a two dimensional load so then this uh, this uh, circle will become uh, like an ellipse because of its poisson ratio it is in this direction is extension in this direction is contra contraction but the same anisotropic material apply a similar kind of load it will undergo extension in both actions in one direction contraction other direction at the same time it will give a rotation so that is the difference between this um, isotropic and anisotropic if you see in a, in a uh, like a rectangular cross section point of view so it will elongate it will elongate and also trip at the same time it will uh, distort like it will change the like a shape 
so that is the difference between the isotropic and anisotropic so the same thing it has been explained here and from the characteristics point of view so the difference between metal and the composites is uh, so the metal is low strain to failure but in its composite is high strain to failure and uh, in case of a fitting uh, like a damage it is uh, uh, metal is uh, metallic is uh, susceptible to uh, fitting corrosion stress corrosion but in case of a composite uh, it is like uh, fitting is very good but it is only simply damage and fabrication damage and here it is uh, in case of uh, a metallic uh, the kind of damage is like a initiation of cracks but in case of uh, composites it is like uh, delamination and uh, in case of a metallic the main responsibility is uh, tensile load in case of composite it is compressive load the delamination will occur and similarly it is service experience it is extensive and very limited if we see from the uh, what are all the its properties of this metallic and uh, this uh, anisotropic composites if you see that uh, in aluminium uh, material its general uh, Inx modulus is around 72-75 GPA and shear modulus is around 29 but in case of high strength uh, a typical uh, fiber of this carbon uh, it is around uh, this is like high strength is uh, only it is a carbon fiber it is around 230 uh, gigapascals and its shear modulus is 50 and similarly if you see epoxy it is almost like uh, it is almost like 150 50th um, uh, almost like uh, very much low as compared to uh, this uh, 230 is uh, is 100 if you see this is like it is below 10 almost like uh, 23 times uh, almost like a difference more than 23 times and uh, here uh, similarly the if you see this is almost like 50 and here it is 1.6 if you see the 50 by 1.5 1.6 it's almost like a 30 30 times uh, there is a difference in the properties if you see other uh, the properties of uh, if you see that this is like individual fiber but if you see if you s prepare a laminate from this a typical uh, carbon epoxy of a 60% fiber, vol fiber volume ratio then the properties are around uh, like 134 to 140 139 and here it is a 70 around 7 to 10 and here it is around 4 but in case of aluminium if you see the properties uh, it is even though it is a fiber or uh, this one three dimensional if you see this uh, these properties are similar 70 70 so here also you can see this 70 uh, uh, this is like a 2.7 right, it's a density and uh, so this data has been taken from the some of the reference uh, textbook these are all approximate uh, properties for example it has been taken there will be slight variation one or two percent but anyway for example it has been shown similarly properties of composite is a tangile strength if you see that uh, individual um, fiber volume ratio it is a 60 percent so how its uh, tangile strength uh, its behavior and all it has been uh, captured here so now so so far it has been discussed fine then then what is the unidirectional lamina how this lamina is useful for us so lamina is a composition of a fiber and resin matrix often available in the market called Q as a Q cured or uh, preplex example it is a carbon epoxy lamina and uh, like Kevlar and epoxy and phenolic like a combination if you see in this uh, a picture there is like a like a, s a fiber and is in the other direction is mainly the, the matrix transverse direction is a fiber 
and if you see other view it is a transverse direction 2 and the thickness uh, direction is 3 so if you individually it's having x modulus in e11 it's in e22 but if you see that overall uh, if you want to get a overall uh, properties of this one it, it depends upon function of the fiber volume ratio and the function of its um, individual uh, elastic properties and summation similarly it is uh, for the uh, in plane shear modulus and even for the uh, fiber for the in the transfer direction these are the properties so the typical fiber resin has been taken a typical carbon epoxy uh, like a lamina so similarly whatever uh, Young's modulus in the uh, fiber direction of for that lamina is a function of uh, this fiber contribution and it is a function of uh, matrix contribution so this E11 is uh, elastic modulus E22 is in um, transverse direction and it is a shear and similarly Poisson's ratio so this is what if you apply in the individual load in fiber direction how it is going to uh, deformation it has been explained here so then uh, just I want to do explain how these properties are calculated a uh, given a carbon epoxy unidirectional continuous fiber with a fiber volume levels of 60 percent how its equivalent properties are calculated in the fiber direction and transfer direction if you see that uh, only carbon fiber uh, properties so this is like Young's modulus this is like shear modulus and this is for epoxy this is Young's modulus and this is shear modulus so then based on the equation uh, here whatever the equation it has been based on the mixtures mixture of rule so same it has been uh, presented here Young's modulus this is 230 into the fiber volume ratio 60 and this is um, uh, this Young's modulus of the matrix it is a 4.5 into its contribution so this is 139 so the same 139 it has been presented here so similarly transfer stiffness in other direction so similar formula it is a 10 gigapascals the same it has been presented here Poisson's ratio and shear stiffness. So you can see here four elastic constant 1, 2, 3, 4. Based on this uh, uh, mu 1, 2, there is a mu 2, 1 as also can be calculated based on this uh, dependability. So that's why for the unidirectional lamina, we need minimum four elastic constants. That how we are going to discuss. So this is what uh, whatever it has been discussed so same so that means the properties uh, along the fiber direction will only contribute to the governed by the fiber properties and while other direction are because of the properties of matrix so now we go for how this uh, going to the theory of elasticity so generalized formula for stress strain is a hooks law that means stress is proportional to strain stress is equal to Young's modulus into strain so the same it is applicable in case of uh, it is a isotropic or an anisotropic but how it is going to apply we can discuss here so if it is a three dimensional body where it is applying a three dimensional stress field in case of a metallic or anisotropic so the same if you take a one cube out of this because of the complex loading in three directions so there is a stress field one is in um, you can take arbitrary axis x y z and one two three so which are all not same it is in a different different directions here it has been shown at a two different cubes to have a better clarity so in this direction what is the stress field so that means here here three stresses one neck one normal and two shear one normal and two shear one normal so totally nine stress fields are produced because of this complex loading similarly in this nine stress fields so that in a better clarity way that sigma x and tau xy and tau xz and tau xy tau yz sigma y sigma z tau xz tau yz so this this tau 
uh, whatever it is, uh, this is called normal stress, and these are all called shear stress. So if you see the same, you can you want to apply in a three dimension, three dimension anisotro anisotropic. So with respect to this cube, so this is like a fiber direction, transverse direction, and through thickness direction. So this is for example, it has been shown here. So this is this axis is different, this axis is different that it has shown as with respect to angle theta. So in the engineering notations, so whatever these notations are sigma x, sigma y, sigma z, tau x, y, tau, tau y, z, tau x, z, tau x, y. So the same it has been uh, uh, given in a uh, contracted notation. So that is in the material coordinate system is this one, contracted is this one. So this is sigma 1 is sigma 1, sigma 2 is sigma 2, sigma 3 is sigma 3. This is the due to normal stresses. Normal st stresses, these are all. So tau 2, 3, tau 1, 3, tau 1, 2. That is replicated as a for convenience is tau 1, tau 4, tau 5, tau 6. These are all called shear stresses. So with this three dimensional stress field, how it is uh, going to uh, get, we are going to discuss. In the stress strength, for an isotropic well, if it is a three dimension stress field based on applying the uh, Hooke's law, stress is equal to strain into Young's modulus. Same it if you put in the three dimensional matrix. So it has been uh, presented as a like a stress is equal to this uh, stiffness matrix into strain matrix. So here this is like a because of this uh, symmetricity of this uh, shear, there are six stress fields corresponding to six stress strains. To get uh, six into six, there are thirty-six elastic constants are required. But this stiffness matrix is a, uh, is a symmetry, so only the diagonal and the above the diagonal terms are only needed. So these are all twenty-one terms. So that means in case of three-dimensional field, any stress field, to define a strain, a stress or strain, we need twenty-one elastic constants. So this is nothing but so. But in the reality. Uh, this is completely anisotropic material um, is uh, a very um, minimum usage and uh, availability only we we can put uh, the purpose of the composites is uh, as a direction dependent so these uh, properties are to some extent isotropic in a particular direction so based on that this orthotropic concept has evolved so orthotropic materials there is a three planes of symmetry that means in a three planes there is a symmetry of the properties that is like it is a directional isotropy as well as a directional anisotropy so the transversely isotropic material means it is a special class of isotropy where there are three directions two and three directions are having similar properties so that is nothing but in the second and uh, third directions properties are same so this is like uh, Based on this, uh, out of this 21, there are only three for each plane. There is a three properties, so three planes, three into three, so nine properties, nine constants exist. So this uh, this UD lamina, how it is, whether we it comes under three D or two dimensional, that we can discuss. Similarly, it is a strain versus stress formulation. It is a compliance matrix where it is a stiffness matrix. So here orthotrophic material, how it has been defined is a three-dimensional orthotropic. If it is a three-dimensional orthotropic, so here there is a planes of symmetry. One is this plane, one is this plane, and other one is this plane. So based on these properties in this direction, properties in this direction are same as in this direction properties in this direction are same as in this direction so that's why it is uh, like a planes of uh, um, a mechanical symmetry so based on that we need to get we get only nine elastic constants so, so if you apply so that's why you need, if you apply only nine elastics all these terms will go as a zero because so that won't contribute its uh, uh, functionality so for in case of a plane stress uh, conditions but number of constants required only four that we can go into discuss so this is the some of the assumptions how we will made already so these are all the uh, notations this is uh, some of the explanation how principal fiber direction how shear and this is uh, how transfer direction 
so this same if it is a two dimensional how it has become this before that this slide can be explained so this is like flint still really if it is a, th a three dimensional orthotropic so how three dimension if it is only 2d orthotropic how this is simplification and has been done because of direction symmetry so through thickness uh, stresses are ignored and it becomes a plane stress idealization so the same thing it has been discussed here so it is a two dimensional uh, plane stress field so that will give only around four elastic constants so here also it is uh, compliance or stiffness matrix it will give similar properties based on its constants so that q11 is based on this uh, parameter it is a function of Young's modulus q2d is a function of Young's modulus and poisson's ratio and similarly q12 but here we need in case of uh, q11 we need uh, e e11 e12 e mu12 and uh, mu uh, mu21 but in case of uh, isotropic we need only uh, Young's modulus and uh, poisson's ratio so that uh, we are going to check whether how it uh, uh, isotropic material produces the um, properties and whereas the anisotropic material produces its properties if you apply a typical uh, section how this behaves uh, uh, it behavior in this direction how it be say behavior in this direction by applying a 150 mpa so as per this uh, equation sigma 1 is equal to uh, this one into this one plus this one into this one plus this one so since we have uh, this component is zero this component is zero so then we get a corresponding lead so in case of a sigma y so similarly you get you can take sigma one or sigma two because it is a, we are taking as a both are similar uh, these both are uh, sigma one one direct fiber direction and loading x direction the same so then sigma y is equal to s12 sigma y sigma y so here what is this uh, epsilon y is equal to s12 into sigma x epsilon y you can see th this one into this one and this s22 into this one and this one into this one so based on this one thing it is clear uh, it is only that uh, shear components are not producing for this sh uh, uh, normal strain in case of a shear uh, shear uh, strain shear strain is a, co a contribution is shear strain is equal to this uh, this component s21 uh, into this one this one s21 into this one and s66 into this one so here these two components are zero and only this component is producing that strain so that is nothing but here so similarly uh, in case of um, uh, anisotropic also we can get similar kind of uh, application so you get uh, but only these properties are different because here you, you it is used as a e value of uh, this uh, metallic here it is e value of uh, that lamina and the rest loading are same so from this so isotropic material only normal stresses only produce normal strain and in case of a uh, unidirectional also normal stress produce only normal strain so both are behaving in a similar manner so only why it is behaving that we can discuss so similarly we can apply in case of a shear we can, we can apply a shear how it behaves in case of a shear sigma x is equal to that means epsilon x is equal to in case of epsilon x is equal to so the s16 into tau xy and uh, sigma y, epsilon y is equal to s26 into sigma xy so the same thing we can uh, we can see here how exactly we are going to get this one this one into this one but here these two components are zero s s s six six into tau one two only is prevailing so that's why here shear also producing only shear strain because of shear load there is a normal uh, component is zero but in case of uh, even anisotropic material also shear only produces only shear but normal it is not producing any uh, shear strain so that means in case of a shear also shear loading also isotropic and, and, and unidirectional lamina shear stress produce only shear strain there is no normal strain that is the um, behavior uh, in case of a uh, anisotropic and uh, uh, isotro that is like a isotropic uh, behavior or a metallic so that why it is happening that we can discuss 
so here in case of uh, uh, the metallic so where exactly we have only two uh, constants only required e and uh, mu but in case of uh, here so there is the Young's modulus in x direction Young's modulus in y direction and uh, shear modulus and uh, Poisson's ratio these are all four constants are required so for my isotropic and orthotropic so there is same thing it is idealization if you see this um, three three direction loading but if you restrict to only two direction so this uh, this is a plane strain idealization is a plane stress but if it is only plane stress it is only this idealization so that will give direct through stresses we ignore then it will become this orthotropic material became beha behavior can be classified into this uh, plane stress condition so that is the same thing it has been explained here but how it has been explained here we can see this is one on axis and off axis so this will give some important uh, distinguished property so that that one is uh, uh, nothing but this uh, sigma 1 60 sigma 1 sigma 2 tau 1 2 is equal to stiffness matrix into epsilon matrix but here these are all these terms are zero as already discussed in the previous uh, slides uh, this this slides so that comes under this orthotropic uh, plane stress condition so this will behave normal stress produces only normal strain shear stress produces only shear strain so this is the behavior of isotropic material so similarly the same behavior is applicable here provided if uh, this loading direction and uh, uh, material axis direction both are same but in case of a loading direction principal material axis is not same so it can produce um, a similar kind of uh, stresses but this uh, uh, this stiffness matrix uh, that plays important role this q16 and q axis are not becoming zero that's why even though if you apply a sigma uh, normal stresses it can produce there is a tension shear interaction because of this component so this is like all, all off axis uh, behavior this important property uh, will create uh, some kind of uh, a coupling issues uh, in case of a laminate building so this can be avoided it can be discussed by putting uh, similar kind of equal and opposite angle uh, uh, lamina above the mid axis that we can discuss when doing that laminate discussion similarly even though if it is a on axis to get this uh, uh, to get this uh, stiffness matrix uh, we can get uh, uh, by using the stress st uh, stiffness transformation this is originally uh, this is the uh, we want to have original this is the original uh, equation uh, uh, stress equal to st uh, strain into Young's modulus but if you want to get only in a particular direction in the loading direction so that will give because of the transformation matrix into uh, this uh, uh, stress field in the uh, individual fiber directions that will give uh, again there will be new uh, stiffness matrix so based on this you can get this one so so far we have di discussed only the lamina so that means how it behaves in the plane stress for this lamina um, this is uh, like uh, uh, technical aspects of uh, this lamina that is how it is important uh, in its uh, final uh, 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 calculation of the properties now I'm going to discuss how the manufacturing of UD lamina so this UD lamina is how it is manufactured so based on this uh, process uh, process 1 process 2 is this fibers whatever the row fibers is uh, dipped into this uh, matrix pool and then from there you will get the impregnator, impregnator from impregnator it can control the uh, fiber volume ratio and finally it will become reels so this is nothing but uh, uh, how a, a lamina is produced there are different kind of process but the once that lamina impregnated lamina a lamina is uh, come into picture how uh, we are going to get uh, this laminate so by stacking one over the other lamina depending upon the our interest area of interest we can get this um, individual uh, laminates so this is like a um, uh, tailoring uh, ply uh, orientation how it behaves like putting in a different direction or like a, a irregular uh, angles so generally the standard uh, convention is applicable but here it is not applicable because provided there should be some tests are required so if you see the individual 
so matrix is uh, how it is uh, behaving from here to here and uh, it is like a laminar level this is like a build laminate level and uh, this is like a subcomponent level and from the finally it is in assembly so if you see the layer process how this uh, like apply is uh, putting together and then uh, you apply this uh, resin and uh, finally it can be uh, stacked together and finally put it into um, this uh, auto autoclave just I want to show some video So this is the lamina how uh, it is putting on the uh, like a mold and this is like a, a prepex based on this uh, uh, how it is going to take uh, its uh, uh, lamina uh, this uh, uh, stacked together. So after this lamina is uh, placed on this uh, this component will be taken to vacuum bagging. So from vacuum bagging it can be uh, that entire uh, it become into inert atmosphere before going to uh, like it's uh, autocalo. This is the like uh, lamina is placing together. And now I'm going to show that uh, video. So this is like uh, uh, vacuum bagging where that entire whatever that la lamina build component is placed under this vacuum bagging where it can uh, um, reduce the it can it can um, uh, take all out that uh, air uh, within that it create a net atmosphere so that it won't uh, create any kind of uh, uh, like in between bubbles or delamination while doing this uh, um, uh, autoclave process. So that's why it is uh, like a stack together properly. So this is what whatever it has been discussed. Uh, So finally, the composites how uh, its uh, uh, its development, starting from preliminary design to analysis, optimization, detailed design, manufacturing simulation, repair and maintenance. So how it is going to uh, discuss? So similarly, the tools application, it is like what are the different stages of the uh, like uh, its design and manufacturing. So just I have put it in a nutshell what exactly uh, it is going to be a uh, design. So this is like a composite uh, a part designer when you do uh, in solid modeling like composite model and finally it is being done in the loop it will go to engineering analyst. From engineering analyst it has been analysis uh, like a layup uh, like a lamina preparation and sizing and design this is like a building of laminate. So this entire cycle is been done using the uh, process and application of parts and uh, your uh, like man machine material once this is done it will go to uh, once this solution is uh, iteration is anyway this is iteration but it is completed so then we will go to that uh, tool designer and like how uh, building that uh, mold and tool and then lay up, lay up the lay up and process and again it will go to the manufacturing so in the manufacturing it will do the planning and uh, finally manufacturing the product so it will go to the industries. So here also it is used like all uh, it like a processes, parts, and skills, and uh, this is like a required uh, elements in the industry. But these are all different different elements. It has been uh, like operating in an individual. So then uh, the entire product development cycle is a typical industrial total cycle, 
every time all in all industries getting the first time right solution but how and in what way we get the right solution so that the solution uh, is uh, depending upon the application of uh, this rationalization process skills and uh, relevant uh, uh, resources and industry application but these are all uh, even though it is like a, a step uh, acting simultaneously together so everything we are calling as only solution but uh, we uh, but that uh, all elements uh, to bring into the uh, single framework there is no uh, name actually so that uh, single framework uh, just we are going to discuss so just whatever we are uh, fine tuning whatever it has been discussed uh, so this is like uh, this is like a composite part design earlier we called uh, in this um, but now just we can really like a skilled uh, skills and skilled uh, composite uh, part designer i will do its uh, solid modeling it will go and finally skilled engineering analyst it will do analysis and again using that uh, rational process and the thoughts relevant industries relevant to the industries like man machine material time and money and once the solution is okay then it will go to again skill this cycle and finally you get the right product so all this we have like like uh, uh, like a streamlining like a solution like a skills like a rational processes starts like a relevant uh, to the industries so this we are trying to bring into a, a unique name so this is like a uh, single from the uh, starting from the uh, sketch from initial to here e everything like a sketch to sales this is like one typical uh, industrial um, uh, part development so to ev everything uh, this will follow this uh, whatever we have discussed uh, like skills process um, like solutions uh, relevant uh, uh, right resources so that entire uh, solution development process uh, is uh, naming of entire solution development process the solutions are applying rational analytical thoughts holistically skills and relevant to the industry so this is finally the purpose is to get the first time right and uh, uh, like uh, utilization of uh, all Uh, elements uh, uh, effectively solutions by applying rational thoughts the process and ideas skills domain and uh, other skills relevant uh, to industries so this starting from ideation scoping and challenges to get the uh, uh, this all the solutions so that it has been framed as a, a name called as a simple name called as a seras 3 so that uh, it has been expressed in the form of a uh, like uh, a functional diagram so this is industry challenges how this uh, in industry every time challenges are the new product development customer requirement project delivery engineering challenges needs or these are all different industry like uh, uh, like starting from academic in the academic education to industry there are different kind of uh, challenges so industries uh, requirement so that uh, finally we need a solution for uh, whatever uh, uh, issue or maybe challenge or maybe need so they finally want to develop a new product or improve process or uh, modifying existing or first time right quality or uh, services or if you want to develop a software or if you want to reduce the carbon content so there kind of a solutions but how these solutions are developed uh, using the rationalization approach and uh, like a process thoughts uh, properly applied and skills proper skills and relevant right resources so all this applying and and to these challenges you will get the solution so that we can we named as a streamlined as a solutions and applying rational thought skills and relevant to the industry so the right uh, solutions so that is uh, in a short form called as a seras 3 so this frame the what is the advantage of uh, framing this so the bringing all elements into the single network single framework more emphasis will given the skills and processes and uh, right resources and to eliminate the wastes this is to the get a first time right it is applicable to any industry in the world so to this can be this name can be by by utilizing this name so we can uh, concentrate mainly application rationalization like uh, processes skills and uh, right right uh, approach like first time right or right uh, this one to the industry so this is not but this all uh, elements are uh, uh, arranged in a synchronized in a synchronized manner to get the um, first time right so finally this is all whatever we had has been discussed in manufacturing of laminate and so far so this is like uh, manufacturing one of these uh, typical manufacturing was a filament winding just uh, showed as uh, how exactly this filament winding is prepared 
So this is like how these uh, uh, filaments are uh, uh, rounded on mantle to get the required product. So then what is the composite future trends? This is just only, I have discussed only the lamina. There is more to discuss on the laminate, but in this session, just I wanted to uh, cover uh, before closing this uh, composite future trends. So this is like a extensive uses of composites over the more than 50% the coming years and in any industry and this automatic tape relation this is like a computerly you know, numerically controlled machine where exactly it can the tapes can be placed over the, to get the uh, like a complicated products and uh, nano composites and where exactly these particles are used and the other one is uh, uses of carbon industry carbon composite industries like the reduction of cost of the carbon in the future in the in the olden days there is a cost is more so this uh, is a reduction of the cost and this is increased use of carbon so that will good, uh, give good trend where we can use the carbon extensively in future and to prepare this uh, i have used uh, some of the references uh, like uh, uh, like sarasri.com uh, composite uh, structures by new composite handbook and the internet some of the um, uh, wikipedia and web journals and papers a reference from Ceres3 supporters and the specialist knowledge database in engineering industry. So with their help, uh, we presented uh, this uh, simple session. Ceres3 concept has been taken by this website. And uh, some of the manufacturing and engineering. So some of this one. And composite, there is a textbook. We have defined some of the properties and all the uh, this uh, design and applications by Stephen Tisai. And the simple knowledge uh, this we have built uh, based on this brought to you by Sarasri Technologies Group. So with um, uh, in the collaborative effort of uh, collaborative of Sarasri and their supporters with their uniform uh, with their unique uh, concept called Sarasri solutions at applying rational thoughts, skills and relevant to uh, right to the industries. So the same material is available on the website and uh, as well as this uh, YouTube. So this part of uh, a training uh, program and webinar uh, series is brought to you by Ceres 3G Technologies and um, a joint uh, like collaborative effort with their uh, so mentors and supporters. And uh, composites uh, part two uh, uh, training session will cover the topics uh, laminate design, types of uh, laminate, ABD matrix, uh, laminate stress analysis, and failure modes and sandwich construction and for to further to this uh, this many more programs will be followed uh, from this uh, group and uh, it is a uh, this uh, the consulting and uh, training sessions will be conducted and for further details so contact contact at sarasri.com and sarasri.etechnologies at gmail.com thank you